And one of the best feelings you can hear is a helicopter coming in if you need it. Staff Sergeant Joseph Bimefour heard the blast that took his legs and remembers the sound of the incoming Blackhawk. I remember everything. I was looking down at the wire, following the wire on the ground, and I heard a loud pop. It wasn't really an explosion, it wasn't a boom. It was more like a loud pop. And I got hit with shrapnel and debris. Um, I was stunned. I didn't really know what would happen. And I looked down and blood was pouring out of my vest. On July 5th, 2005, as the dust from the explosion settled on a heavily mined road in Bakuba, Iraq, the medics knew there was little time before life would slip away from Joe Bynford. His lower body had been shattered by an improvised explosive device who was planted in the road by insurgents. A member of his 1st Infantry Cavalry Scout Patrol, who was walking slightly ahead of him, was dead on the ground. I did talk to my medic who treated me that day, and he said when he put me on the helicopter, he thought I was dead. Once again, a Black Hawk scrambled to the scene of an IED attack, and for Joe Bime 4, it did not look good. My left leg below the knee was blown off, actually, at the site. It's what they call a traumatic amputation. And my right leg, uh, because I was so close to the blast, it essentially splintered all the bones in my right leg and uh, ripped all the blood vessels and arteries in my right leg. So my right leg was so badly damaged they couldn't salvage it. I was bleeding from my abdomen, I was bleeding from my femoral artery, I was losing a lot of blood. So when they called the medevac from Balad, Balad is about a 45 minute drive from where we were. So by helicopter it wasn't that far at all. So they got out to us in 12 minutes and then once they saw how badly uh, I was injured and had to get back to the hospital, they actually got me back to the hospital in about six minutes. Um, I guess they routinely do a, uh, they clear their landing zone before they, they land patients at the hospital, uh, but they didn't do that with me. They just came in hot, landed, and took me in. Stabilized in Iraq, kept alive on the flight to Germany. Joe was sustained by the gentle care of air medical units, then teams of doctors and nurses and physical therapists. Nearly 70% of the war injured are victims of IED blasts and soft-spoken Joe Bimefour, who dreamed of being an LAPD SWAT member after he finished his tour, is one of them. When he came home, his body was broken, his will was not. But there were so many unknowns. What's it going to look like when I wear prosthetics? How am I going to walk on these things? What are people going to treat me like? You know, am I going to be able to date? Am I going to be able to get married? Is somebody going to find me attractive, missing no limbs? Nineteen marathons later, proudly wearing the colors of the Achilles Track Club that sponsors disabled racers worldwide, Joseph Bimefour counsels other service people who have not been able to embrace recovery and look forward as he has. Soft-spoken about his service, he asks little back for his sacrifice. All I want to hear is somebody say, how are you doing? Were you a veteran? Yes. Thank you for your service. That's all I want. You know, I, I, I got into an argument with a guy the other day because uh, I can't remember where I was at, but he walked up to me and said, how'd you lose your legs? Not, hi, how are you doing? Were you a veteran? Did you serve in Iraq and Afghanistan? How'd you lose your legs? So you want me to tell you the worst day of my life to a complete stranger and you don't even want to have the courtesy to introduce yourself. So, you know, be kind be nice, and just thank them for their service. Back in Tampa, Joe Bimefour, who proudly reveals he's part Cherokee, whose friends call him Mighty Joe, gets ready for another race. There isn't an ounce of self-pity in his voice, not a flicker of bitterness. Spend one afternoon with Mighty Joe, and there's only one conclusion you can draw. This is the kind of guy they write books about. When I was on that helicopter, that medevac, when I first got injured, I said a prayer to God, asking to spare my life, asking to let me live. But if he wanted me to come home, I would go home. I was ready, I was ready. You know, I, I confessed my sins, my, my soul was saved. If, if God wanted me to come home, I would have went home. So when I woke up and I was alive, that's all that mattered. Yeah, I lost my legs, but I was alive. Life can go on even if you're faced with, you know, horrible circumstances. You know, you don't have to give up. You, you, you can fight. You can keep going on. You know, I, have, I'm, I am disabled now. I have a disabled life, but that doesn't mean that my life stopped. It's just it has to be adapted. It has to be modified, but it still goes on.